Sure. There are several different types of adjuvant drugs. We always think of the anticonvulsants. There are the older anticonvulsants, such as carbamazepine, phenytoin, for example, valproic acid. Those drugs tend to have a lot of pharmacokinetic issues that the practitioner has to wrestle with. Some of the newer anticonvulsants that we use most often are gabapentin and pregabalin. Those drugs are famous for causing somnolence and ataxia. You've got to be very careful in dosing those drugs. You want to start low and go slow while titrating, particularly in older adults. You can see a little peripheral edema. So they work by inhibiting the calcium voltage gated channels. Then we have the antidepressants. We have the older tricyclic antidepressants, which we really don't use for depression any longer because of the side effects, but at much lower doses they will treat neuropathic pain. We have the SNRI serotonin neuropinephrine reuptake inhibitors. They're beneficial in treating both depression as well as neuropathic pain. The SSRIs, like the Prozac Zoloft group, are not particularly helpful in treating neuropathic pain. We have other groups of drugs to treat neuropathic pain. We've got clonidine, which we frequently use for high blood pressure. We have anesthetic agents. We have antiarrhythmics, such as lidocaine. But when used, for example, like lidocaine in the patch, lidoderm, it's used to treat fairly superficial, well-localized pain, such as the pain from post neuralgia. We have topical products such as a non-steroidal, which could be used specifically to target pain such as metastatic bone pain, or locally, for example, on your knee for osteoarthritis of the knee, on your elbow for a tennis elbow or bursitis or something like that. So those are some uh, classic examples. Also steroids, corticosteroids, we use very often to treat specific types of pain syndromes.